Well, welcome back into the studio for another episode of Mixed Media Basics. And today we're going to start a two-part series on color. So color 101, just the basics. And I'm going to be using throughout this, this nice um, color wheel. It's It's got multiple pieces that swivel and turn so you can see the different um, types of colors and that kind of thing. A mixing, it's great for um, checking out mixing and that kind of thing. I uh, This is my very favorite go-to tool when it comes to color. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is primaries. So a primary color is red, blue, and yellow. So, red, blue, and yellow. Now, these colors cannot be mixed from any other colors. Um, they are the source of all the other colors. And this is real basic, so you probably already have this and probably already know what um, primary colors are. But the true colors are blue, red, and yellow and from that we can mix all other colors all other hues all right so we're going to talk a little bit about secondary colors first before i demonstrate it to you um, secondary colors are made from primary colors so this is another one that goes back to kindergarten um, when you mix primary uh, red with primary yellow you get orange when you mix primary red with primary blue you get purple when you mix primary blue and primary yellow you get green so the secondary colors are orange purple and green. I'm going to demonstrate some secondary colors by doing some mixing. All right, so I'm pulling out my primary colors and I am going to try and get equal amounts of each of these, mix them for our secondary colors. Alright, so now that we've got those out, I am going to mix these. I like the flat edge of these for mixing colors. So I'm going to come in and red and blue make purple. This is kind of a, a dark eggplanty purple. And if we were to add white or black, we would get a different kind of purple. The more red you get, it'll be more on the red side. So if we were to, there's a little bit left here, add just a hair more red. I don't know if we have enough paint here to kind of bring that out. But you can see, I uh, did not do a very good job of mixing that red in there, but you can see it's a little lighter. All right, and then red and yellow make orange. Oh, 
Oops. Well, we'll see how that goes. I definitely do not have like a trained eyeball for amounts. And when I mix paint, I don't like to put that much thought into it. I like to just do and play. And sometimes I end up with a lot. But also it keep, helps keep me kind of in that intuitive space. Love this green. Um, it's almost like an emerald green, um, but not as bright. Let's see if I can get this mixed up better than I did with the others. And I'm just using this is again watercolor paper. And this is just deli paper. But those are our secondary colors. So purple, orange, and green that are made from just primaries are our secondary colors. All right, so now we're going to jump into tertiary colors. So here's a slide that explains that a little bit better. So here <clears throat> we've got our primary colors, red, blue, yellow, and here we have our secondary colors, orange, purple, and green. So as you've just learned, tertiary colors is where you take a secondary color and add a primary color to it. So if we take our orange and add red to it, we are going to get a red orange. Kind of like a perial red, just to coin a color that's out there and one of my favorites is a tertiary color, red orange. Beautiful color. Never been a huge fan of reds, but I love this color. There's something about it. You can scrape it back and get some nice depth. I love a perial red or a red orange. So next we can take a orange and add yellow to it. So we have our orange and we can add yellow to it to make more of a, we need a little bit more yellow here. To make a yellow orange. Again, a tertiary color. We take a secondary color, our orange, and add a primary to it. So 
So another one is we can take a purple and add a blue to it. Paint booger of an enormous size. I am not a fan of tubes, by the way. <laughs> Just saying. I like tubs. <laughs> uh, we can take a purple and add blue to it. And we could make more of a violet color. That's a pretty color too. It reminds me of Halloween, these two colors next to each other. <laughs> I am not a big Halloween person, but you know, there's that as well. Um, you could take the purple and add red to it and we'll mix it right here since we can and oops that's a little bit on the much side let's take a little to the side here and we could make more of a red violet this is also a gorgeous color another tertiary. Um, for our green, you can add a little blue to it and it's gonna make a blue-green color or you can add yellow to it and it is going to make more of a yellowy green. I don't have a lot of green here so I'm only gonna demonstrate a, a blue-green which I think of of like an algae kind of deep seaweed kind of green. I might have enough. Deeper seaweed green. So we took our green and we added blue to it to come up with this as a tertiary. Um, so we have this. Let's just mix these two and we'll just Get our green back, our secondary green. There we go. And we add a little bit of yellow to it. Oh my goodness. What a mess. That's kind of a lot of yellow to it. <laughs> I mean, I just feel like when you're mixing your own colors, if you're really worried about the quantities and that kind of thing of how much you're making or getting exact amounts, you're gonna run yourself ragged. Um, I think it's good knowledge to have. So if you need to make your own colors, cause it does cost less in the long run, rather than purchasing all the colors on the market, it does, help to have the knowledge, but here is more of a yellowy green. We could even go further with the yellow and bring that down even more. And now we're getting into more of a leafy, traditional leafy green. There we go, that's one that's got a little bit more yellow to it. So there are our tertiaries. Red, orange, yellow, orange, yellow, green, blue, green, blue, violet, and red, violet. The tertiary colors. All right. All right, so next up, we're gonna talk about analogous colors. Analogous colors are any of one group, so of related colors. So 
those that are near each other. So for this, I'm just gonna show you the color wheel um, so you can see the analogous colors would be red, red, orange, and orange as an example. So the term analogous refers to having analogy or a corresponding to something in particular. So the red, red, orange, and orange are corresponding to each other. So they're considered analogous colors. So yellow, yellow, orange, orange, or yellow, yellow, green, green would be analogous colors. So analogous is, it's a big word for something that's really simple. Easy peasy, analogous colors. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is complementary colors. Complementary colors are pairs of colors which when combined or mixed, cancel each other out by producing a gray color so a grayscale color such as black or white. So when placed next to each other, they create the strongest contrast for those two colors and make each other look brighter. Um, sometimes complementary colors could be called opposite colors, but an example of this is red and a green. If you mix them together, you're gonna get mud, which is considered a grayscale color. You keep adding darker, it'll turn to black eventually. So what I like to do, a, a way to like maximize some of the um, pa impact for me at least, cause I don't, when I see red and green next to each other, I think Christmas, I think every American really does. And so I like to do something a little different and kind of change up. So I'm gonna pulled out a primary red and which is like pretty pretty Christmassy. And if I were to put an evergreen next to this or even kind of a leaf green, we would automatically think of Christmas. And yeah, I don't want if, I'm, if I wanna use a complementary color, I'm gonna do something a little different than that because I do not want Christmas to be on a painting that it has nothing to do with the holiday or a journal page. I want them to do what complementary colors do best and really bring out that bright look. So I'm gonna come in with a sap green. And we're gonna just put them side by side because if we mix them, they are going to not. Now a sap green, they're gonna turn into like a brown, like a mud. Now sap green is definitely a tree-like green, but it is much more earthy toned and sap green traditionally is very uh, translucent. And here we can get it. That's why I'm using a rubber spatula is because I really want to get it thin. And you can see, I'm hoping you can see when we put these next to each other, that they really pop. I'm trying to get that white out of there without mixing these together. They really pop. So that's something that you can do to mix that up a little bit is get to really a translucent green going, a different green. Another way to do that would be to come in with a yellow green. Now it's not going to pop as much if it's more yellow because a yellow green would go really well with like a red purple. Um, so that to sign. I'm going to bring out a different green. I'm going to come in with a bright yellow green. So this is a green that has more yellow to it. So I would call this a secondary color. 
now that the red has dried a little bit, you can definitely, we don't get it mixed, but you can see how that really, I'm gonna let that be thick. I don't want it as translucent and see how that makes that red really pop. Okay, so let's take a look at a yellow and a purple. I love deep violet next to a really bright primary red. So I'm gonna start off with some of this deep violet. Again, this is a, a somewhat of a translucent, so I'm gonna get it pretty heavy here because I want it pretty concentrated. And you know, let's actually get some thinner so we can see how it, it looks next to that yellow. Okay. Again, these are complementary colors. Try and get that as close as possible without having them mix. And you can really see how those colors pop. Now, if you were to let this dry, then you wouldn't get that mixing going in. So if I let that purple dry before I put this yellow down, but you can really see how that really uh, pops. Another example, and one of my favorites is orange and blue. So I'm gonna go in with a primary blue not my favorite I'm not a huge blue fan and this is definitely not one of my favorites um, but I'm going to show you a couple things that I like to do when I'm using a darker blue We're gonna, I'm gonna come in with a neon orange. This is a brand that is no longer made. A neon next to that blue. And I don't know if that's popping because it's a neon, which it very well could be, but I really like that as an option. Grab the wrong spreader there. And then I'm gonna come in with another orange that I really like with a dark blue. Which is a vermilion hue. And I really like that. It has more of an earthy tone to it. That orange does. And the neat thing, if you were to, like I'm gonna show you right now is this, this vermilion hue. If I drag it really thin, I like how it mixes with the neon. Not like if you mix it like a color mixing, but like if you just let it peek through. I really like how that looks against the blue as well. But you can really see how that pops. And usually your color wheel is going to show you what complementary colors are. So blue and orange, they're straight across from each other on the wheel. And we can turn this wheel and go to violet and yellow. So yellow and purple. And if we go to the red, you're gonna see it's gonna take us to the green. So you can really turn to whatever color and go straight across and that is your complementary. So a red orange goes really good with a blue green.
So if we were to go up, come in with a perial red, let's do it. So a perial red with a blue green or an aqua. I love perial red. Like when I discovered perial red, I started to like red. I'd never really liked red. And you can definitely see the difference between a primary red. This has um, more yellow in it. Got just a tad of yellow. Now I'm gonna go ahead and dry this because I wanna show you um, this without getting any mixing. I want to get it really close to it. So I'm going to go ahead and dry this real quick. Not totally dry, but the edges are pretty dry here. And I'm going to go in with this bright aqua green. So again, red, orange, straight across the arrow, blue, green. This is more, I think, green than blue, but it is an aqua. I just think that that really pops. I love that together. That's one of my favorite complementaries. So anyways, that kind of gives you an idea of complementary colors. So this is part one of a two part um, I just didn't want going over colors to be really overwhelming, but I felt it was important to um, at least have the basics of color um, kind of in your pocket and just have the knowledge there in case you wanted to go there. Or if you're like, oh, I'm so tired of the colors I'm using, let's play with this. And maybe you choose to do something even here, you know, the with this... Uh, neon orange and this uh, vermilion orange together with uh, some type of blue. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean it has to be this blue, but uh, even an indigo would look really good with the orange and the neon orange and the vermilion orange with a regular orange either, even because it is a complementary color. So Anyways, I hope this has been beneficial and that you've gotten a lot out of this. I know color can be really overwhelming. It is something that people who've gotten their de art degree have gone through. I, I don't know that all artists actually use it, um, but it's good knowledge just to have in the background, but I don't think you have to do, to do a deep dive into color um, if you're just not, if you just want it for basic information. So there it is, uh, part one of the basics. So next time, see, this is um, November. So part two will actually be in January. We're going to start going because I do mixed media basics and technique Tuesdays. I flop and next month in December, we're going to be doing part two of resists in technique Tuesday. So in January, we'll do color 101 part two.